Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Underrail Expedition. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy to have you here with me as I talked with the uh, principal investigator, Gorkis, who is uh, a, a goof. Uh, also, mm, I am a goof, but he, he, through, through me, principal investigator Gorgas is a goof, and uh, he's giving us a job because we're working for the Institute of Chort. We're going to follow this through. He also apparently is capable of um, identifying what the black chard that we got at the end of the expansion, the expedition expansion, um, that, that he might be able to identify what the black shard is. He says, yes, right, I currently need you to help me with two things. First is related, the, the first is related to a experimental chemical weapon, a pistol to be precise, that needs to, uh, some combat testing. Oh, that's bad, because I suck at it. Judging from your recent history of lunatic decimation, you have, uh, uh, you shouldn't have trouble with this one. Ha 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 ha! Those feral creatures. Anyway, the second, this time I said the second properly, is related to the matter of locating and retrieving research data our department would find very, very useful. It would require you to leave the Institute building. I haven't left the building since I got here. It was around 85, I remember. Wait, what? It was around 85, if I remember correctly. Ah, right. Uh, at the time of Core City. Of the core city riots, so I don't know how much outside the outside the outside has changed, and therefore how much my directions will be accurate. So, sister, are you still interested? If you are, I can give you the details. I am, in fact. Oh, I can. Okay. Uh, why did you join the Institute of Chort? That happened a long time ago, some 15 years ago. I used to work as a chemist in Core City. I was young and ambitious, but those ambitions were, uh, at least temporarily, shattered when I really enjoy stopping my sentence midway through to add specif specificities. Let's start from the beginning. Those ambitions were shattered when news that Biocorp was overtaken. When news what? That's not even properly written. News... A, 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 a rove or happened when by like why do you talk about news shut up but those ambitions were shattered when biocorp was overtaken by the protectorate oh no no that makes sense came from north underrail so those ambitions were shattered when news came from north underrail that biocorp was overtaken by the protectorate at least they were shattered temporarily the by the chart, I still remember when the rioters broke into my home and started thrashing and pillaging. They thrashed and pillaged for the whole night, in bread primitives. So I left Car City and sought the, the, the Institute of Chort. At the time, ext wow, that's another, that's a, like, that is another coma that you could do. So I left the Cor uh, Cor City and I sought the, at the time, extremely unfamiliar, Institute of Chort. That is a sentence. That, oh, actually, that is that comma should be there and it'll be fine. I've heard of it from... I had. 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 Had heard of it. Heard of it from some friends of mine. And I came upon those same ex entrance gates that you came upon the, uh, earlier. Yes, I, I still remember it. The gates. Because of I haven't been outside for so long. The moment I stepped through the gate, I felt something. Uh, from a bleak outlook of on life... I, I suddenly felt my ambitions waking up again. And I guess I managed to realize those ambitions. Investigation was a natural choice for me, and therefore I started as an assistant chemist. Few, uh, a, a few years later... Eh, no, actually, a few years later. No, that's, not, that's weird. Few, a few years passed, and after a lot of hard work, I became a proper investigator and led some of my own projects. Then, finally, in year 92, I became a principal investigator. I think the, the years here are, uh, they, they have their own calendar, so they have the years since the foundation. That's the years that we were reading as well in the important events. Then, in year 92, I became a principal investigator. The next stop, Epic Episcopos Gorgas. Ha 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 ha. I am joking, of course, but who knows? Such a goof. Um, is there a way for me to get a hold of some chemicals around. I don't know what my obsession with chemicals is. I just want caffeine is probably or something. Um, it is rare for someone to come with that request because everybody has 
coffee in the cantina. But I don't see why not. Go talk to Investigator Octavia. She can sell you some of the chemicals we have in excess. Just tell her I gave you permission. Where can I find her? She is right outside my office. You walk past. You talked. I saw you. You jerk. You're pulling my leg, aren't you? Short guy, you gorgeous. Did you, uh, yes. And he yawns. Octavia, give me the coffee. Princip the principal investigator, Gorgas, or actually that works as well, told me I could purchase chemicals from you. No problem. This is what we have available. There we go. Now, more importantly, what does she want from me? She wants some uh, recipes. Two blueprints, in fact. That is good news. Double clicks, double clicks. Alt click, I think, works as well. Uh, she can pay for that, so that's good news as well. As well. We got three medicines to sell. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Mm, not too bad. Not too bad. But. Bit. But. 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 I don't want to sell any medicine. Hiccups. I have hiccups. As usual. Let's see what they have. Um, hmm. Psy boosters. They probably have the smoker smokers. Uh, mm, I don't know. Incendiary bolt. I don't need that anymore. Uh, blueprints over here. That no, no blueprints for me. And yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. That's very many chemicals, you being able to basically sell stuff to her. Anyway, um... Ho oh, oh, ho oh, ho! It is you, sister! Yes, uh... Tell me more about the experimental chemical weapon. Actually, in, just in case you have to choose, instead of, like, actually going through them one at a time, uh, I'm gonna go with the second one, because I probably won't be able to fire the pistol for crap. Uh, tell me more about that research data you need. Yes, right. Let me tell you of an old Biocorp facility by the name of Hackett Research Outpost that exists somewhere in Lower Underrail. I think I know where it is. I don't remember where it is, but I think I... Oh, yeah, I definitely uh, remember where it is. We might be able to tell, because um, it's in Lower Underrail. It's not up here. It is a small facility that usually... Well, actually, look at me using the word witch properly. It is a small facility which usually wouldn't be worth of worthy of your time. Usually, we institute of we the the institute of Chort uh, has recently acquired a document that suggests that some interesting data on protein design can be found there. Apparently, they did some projects there, and well, if if they were able to identify any novel sequences, it could be of great use. Therefore, I would like you to visit that place and snoop around and see what you can find, if something can be found at all. The facility is located somewhere to the east of Core City. We don't have an exact location, but it shouldn't be too far away from it. So, what do you say, sister? Are you interested in making a contribution to the Institute? Uh, what else can, what else can you tell me about uh, the Hecat Research Outpost? Well, all we know about it comes from a document that recently came into our possession. Apparently, Hackett used to be a, a relatively small research facility located somewhere in Lower Underrail and used to be owned by, you have guessed it, Biocorp. Magnificent chort. Now that I remember, nearly everything was Biocorp back then. Hackett was small and not too important, so it became forgotten when Biocorp was overtaken by Underrail Protectorate. Mm -hmm, for sure. And now it's time to unearth it again and uncover its secrets. Interested? Yeah, I'll see what I can do about it. Apex! What else can I do but short... What? What else can I say but short guide you carry? Mm-hmm. Uh, so... You mentioned protein design. Why? What is that? I dine, pardon me. I suppose I missed explaining that. Protein design is, uh, by definition, a creation of new protein molecules that will fold or assume a certain shape, to a certain protein structure. They what? They will what? They will assume a certain shape to a certain protein structure. Sure. And the whole reason why we would seek to do that, sister, is so that we can create proteins with completely new or slightly varied functions, which is as vague as I can be. That's, it's like, it's completely new or slightly new. Slightly varied, I don't know. Anyway, uh, since proteins are one of the most important biomolecules that, uh, with the numerous functions, you can see why designing new sequences is such an important task. Yes, right, that would be the gist of it. It's actually the, the same principle as uh, folding at home, uh, the famous multi m supercomputer that you can have on your own house running on your computer. Um, if you don't know what it is, you should look into it. It's pretty it's pretty good. Uh, but basically, it's a software that runs on your computer and uses your computer's power 
or processing power to um, fold proteins and uh, calculate what we can do, what how we can change them, and all this sort of stuff. And uh, they're used for a lot of things, like Alzheimer's treatment and uh, Huntington's treatment and uh, uh, cancer treatments and a bunch of other stuff. Proteins are very powerful for a bunch of stuff. I think they're also responsible for DNA sequencing. Uh, rather, for maintaining. I think RNA, basically, is is a protein. Mm, I'm not sure about that. Either way, it's related to... to it's, it's it's basically uh, bio-mumbo-jumbo so that he can... They can do the short thing. It's the short thing. We're going to collect a short thing. It's fine. Uh, except for the folding at home, which is a real thing that you definitely should look into. Uh, let's see. Yeah, tell me more about that experimental chemical pistol. Yes, right. The chemical pistol. Somewhere around year 97, were we... Where, were, were we approved? We were approached by preservation about us helping them design a more advanced chemical weapon that wet than what was available at the time. Something truly apex. You see, Harmost Stra Stavros desired all Rasafor expeditions in the deep caverns to be equipped with several chemical weapons per combat unit during their time down there. The reason for that were a logical of a logical nature. A combat unit could use naturally occurring caustic chemicals the acids uh, that uh, which are abundant in the, the deep caverns and can be obtained from living uh, sources or environmental sources and uh, what where was I the reasons no was it the reasons oh the acids may I don't know this where does this pick up my god this sentence the reasons for that were that to be self-sufficient ammunition, therefore maintaining constant ki combat capability. Absolutely can uh, go on. Which brings us to ZAL-001. That is uh, short for Experimental Acid Launcher 001. It offers a great improvement in terms of fire rate and ergonomics over all available models currently in use. And we are planning further attachments to increase capacity and to help the processing of raw chemicals in the field, yada, yada, yada. Principal Investigator Gorgas, all you have said so far has been yada yada yada. Don't yada 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 me. <laughs> what is wrong with you? What do you mean yada yada yada? All of this is yada yada yada. If I didn't want to hear it, I would have just, you know, skimmed over it and said, ah, you can pause the video if you want to read it. Anyway, to sum it up, he says, we believe it to be truly Apex design. Again, where where do I come in with this? Oh right, listen, how okay. carry. Uh, while we are ple we we are pleased so uh, so far with how the prototype turned out, it still needs more field testing before it can finally enter production. That is where you come in, sister. I need you to test the weapon, preferably on lunatics or the faceless. You uh, had suc head successfully. Probably forget the head. You successfully dealt with the former in the past, so I have no doubt that you will enjoy the work. The bottom line is, if you are interested, I can give you a ZAL-001 right with uh, this very moment so that you can, uh, you may test it with short guidance, of course. Ha 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 ha! Mm-hmm. Um, I will. I need to find a faceless, but I don't know if I can find more lunatics. Hopefully I will, but I will. I mean, it's, if it's in this quest, yeah. I will test the ZAL-001 for you. May I have it? Ah, Apex, here it is in all its glory. And he hands you the chemical weapon. There, and some ammo, almost forgot. I would like you to abuse the weapon. That is the goal of this test. Also, if anyone bothers you at the main entrance, just tell them you are performing weapon tests for Principal Investigator Gorgas. For how long do I need to use the weapon? The longer the better, really. Remember, the weapon was designed for use in extreme conditions, so abuse it appro appropriately. Ha 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 ha. Once you think the weapon is up to par with the task, let me know. Uh, well. Understood. I will do as you instructed. Short guide you. Short guide you too, Carrie, and, uh, he yawns. Sorry. I yawned. Short guide you, and look, good luck. Absolutely. You are forgiven for yawning. Uh, what do we have? So, he gave me ammo as well. So, 16 shots is all I need. Uh, there's a, it's a pistol. Uh, and uh, it says the description ZAL-001 uh, is an advanced chemical pistol design that is a product of collaborative effort between both the preservation and investigation divisions of the Institute of Short. Increased reliability, ergonomics, and rate of fire, as well as the ability to m 
for multiple attachments. The most important of all is perhaps the chemical extractor that allows for fast and efficient weapon reloading. And then it says, there's a sentence at the end that says, Make ZAL-001 a milestone in advanced weapon design. I will not make it that. I uh, I will not. But uh, maybe I, maybe the Mr. P I uh, can uh, can do something with that. I I, I guess he'll he'll be have to uh, to make that decision. Anyway, we have uh, more places to be, obviously, and we have uh, still to. Yeah, look at them. They're gaining. That's good. That means basically, if you get in here and attack them immediately, they're recovering their psi, so they can't use their psi right at the beginning. We got an assistant and an investigator. There's some shelves uh, with what look like good things, but nope, that is a bad thing. Uh, we got some plasma cores. Those are not bad enough. Uh, they're not bad at all, but I'm not going to take them. Uh, that is not an electrocution thing. It's just uh, some Tesla coils, because these people are doing third grade uh, chemical experiments, or not chemical, electrical, physical. That's the word. And principal investigator Steff. That's, uh, that's that. Okay, I want to see, I want to find out if I can get electrocuted in this, because that would be fun. Oh my god, that I didn't expect to die so much. Um, I died a lot, so there it is. That's why you save. Thank you very much. It's nice attention to detail. How are you liking the Institute, sister? New discoveries every step of the way, I think. Iodine is here. Iodine is Cthulhu. He's got tentacles. Either that or... It's just breathing tubes and whatnot. And also we have Investigator Kiro. Now we'll assume that's like Japanese and it'd be Kiro. Pronounced properly, maybe. Uh, let's have a chat with the Steph first, because he intimidates me less um, than, than the other ones. The investigator seems to have just finished typing something on his keyboard when you walked. Uh, when you walk in, the final keystroke coincides with you coming to a halt before him. He lifts his head and observes you through his glasses, and he doesn't have any glasses on his portrait, but still, um, and instantly notices one detail. Okay, that there is a smudge on them. Oh, on the glasses. Naturally, he removed. That's not natural at all. I have multiple smudges on my glasses as I speak. I've had them for this whole episode, and from the, for the whole day, in fact, because I haven't cleaned them today. Uh, he removes the glasses, picks a, uh, picks a handkerchief up from his drawer, and begins wiping the lenses clean. As he is doing so, the, com the conversation begins. Short is evolution. I haven't seen you before, sister. And you must be here either to appreciate the light show produced by our resonant transformer, or to do some scientific investigation. Either is acceptable. I am Principal Investigator Steph, pl but please, just call me Steph. You are... Uh... Evolution is short, brother. I am Kerry, and I have a few questions for you. I have no objections to that, Kerry. Ask whatever questions you have. I was wondering if you have any work I could help with? Hmm. Interesting choice of words, Carrie. Doesn't sound that way to me. No, no, what I meant was... I, me I mentioned it was interesting because of a young Rassifor who... Um, came to me with those exact same words you just spoke. I mean, he was interested in what we do here and wished to help. His name is Pavel. At the time of his arrival, the department was testing a terahertz, or a T-ray e emitter that uh, would allow us to... No, excuse me. A terahertz emitter, or a T-ray, that would allow us to perform through walls... Uh, uh, perform through wall imaging. I hope you are able to understand how useful such a, a technology could be to us all. Just imagine... Mm, better leave the long talk for later and return to Rasafor Pavel. Uh, he was a man who clearly missed this call, a member of the preservation forces who had more interest in scientific investigation than anything else. He would often drop by our lab and was no doubt about it. Mm, excuse me. He was generally interested in all the wonders of physics, no doubt about that. Some two days ago, he dropped by the lab and found out the full possibilities of through-all imaging, which made him even more interested and excited. 
I told him about needing to somehow test the emitter in a very active environment, and since the West Wing had been reopened, he personally volunteered to go there and plant the device. I thought it was too dangerous, and, well, now I asked him um, how he was going to do it without me and Samuel finding out, but he convinced me that he had a plan and everything was going to be Apex. Well, I guess I sent him to his doom because he wasn't he hasn't returned still and I regret ever se accepting that risk in the first place uh, that is a very sad story but the whole idea about through wall imaging is quite interesting no no period there interestingly enough as well uh, can you tell me more about these emitters through wall imaging also known as cameras on the other side of the wall maybe certainly how about I start with the problem first and then move on to t-ray technology uh, which is the solution to the problem. Our whole lives we live un surrounded by walls. Rock, brick, metal. Take a pick. Take the pick. Take your pick. That's the word. Uh, open space is non-existent, pretty much, and, well, visibility is therefore very limited. What if we could see through these walls? Mm, let's move on to that. To be able to acquire a certain image of what is behind an obstacle, you first need to send some particular... Some, sorry particle through or around it since going around is not an option most of the time through it'll have to be sister uh, you can use high energy ionizing radiation but that'll probably give you cancer or outright kill you it depends because of the how oh, anyway uh that's yeah. but if the energy is too low then you are not penetrating the object the obstacle which is also I, that's not true I don't think that's true. X-rays don't become stronger. Like, it's not... You don't need a very powerful... Is that true? I think you need a bigger lens for an X-ray rather than the power for it to, to penetrate things. Might be wrong on that. Yeah, I don't know. Either way, the, you know, ionizing radiation, it's just an X-ray. Uh, but he for him, it's a T-ray because... Ugh, I have no idea. Um... Terahertz, what would that be, actually? An x-ray, I don't... An x-ray... I think that's, like, way... Way in the stratosphere, the terahertz. An x-ray is, like, 5,000 hertz? Something like that, I think? Or starts... Ionizing radiation, in general, starts at 5... No, it starts more. It's 25,000 or something. Anyway, the best type of radiation, according to our tests, is the terahertz radiation. It lies between the microwave and the infrared band. Mm. With frequencies measured in several terahertz. No, it doesn't. So excuse me for the low quality of the picture here. I just looked it up online um, to see very quickly. So you can see that the hertz goes up very fast. This way, right? Uh, so we can see over here, uh, this is visible light. Uh, infrared and microwave would be somewhere around here. Anything can be, by, by the way, anything can be measured in terahertz, even if it is 0.000001 terahertz. Tera is not even that much. Uh, it's just basically a thousand gigas. Um, and either way, the ionizing radiation starts, uh, I think, somewhere around here. It's right after ultraviolet, if I'm not mistaken. I've got uh, radars and there's a bunch of... Uh, there's a bunch of other things that are missing over here. But you can see the wavelength. Uh, this is measured in wavelength uh, here, but it, it, the frequency is the same. So the more or the shorter the wavelength, the the more frequency it is because the frequency is the amount of uh, uh, little... Uh, the amount of pe peaks or the repeatability of the wave uh, per second. That's Hertz is always ticks per second. So if you have 60 something happening every second, then you're, it's operating at 60 Hertz. And the wavelength... Uh, radio wavelength and stuff like that uh, is like a 70 hertz or 100 hertz, so it's very low, and that means that the wavelength, uh, which is measured in meters, but I'm not 100% sure how that translates because this is at the speed of light, so the uh, it, it is it, it does happen you know per per uh, per second because that, there's a speed component to the meters, so it's the distance over time and it's just complicated. Uh, the point is um, this would be the frequency. Am I reading this wrong? I'm not reading this wrong, am I? Yeah. Because this over here, that's the wavelength. 
And 10 uh, to the minus 3 is basically, in meters, it's basically 0 0.001 meters, which is 1 centimeter wavelength. That sounds about right. Um, either way, radio is very powerful. That's where we do all the things. X-rays are on the other spectrum, side of the spectrum. So, I don't know what this... The, get ready for some mumbo-jumbo, basically. More mumbo-jumbo. So, moving on. It is convenient for one other reason. We have managed to fine-tune the waves, the paths through solid non-living objects, but the reflected, but be reflected back when it hits living tissue, creating a three-dimensional map of all living entities in the operational vicinity of the emitter device. Uh, that is amazing, but it can only detect living things. Currently, yes, but even that is a leap forward from what we had before. Zilch. He, he laughs. I mean, it would be pointless to explain what you can do with it. You are a smart enough woman, so I'll let your Im imagination do the work. And if you ever decide to become an investigator, imagination will be your most powerful ally. I dine, pardon me, but sometimes it is even more important than knowledge. Remember that, eh? Yep. Uh, well, I think we have a mission here, but we are also out of time for the day. So for right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Under Rail Expedition. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment. Like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.